everybody, it's Mr. Gaff here, and today we're going to be talking about the solar system. Or the solar system, for those of you who can't whistle. Whee! Now what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at the major objects of the solar system. So first we're going to look at the sun, then we're going to talk about the planets, then we'll talk about comets, asteroids, and satellites. So those are the five things that we're going to be covering in this video. Let's get right to it. First, we're going to talk about the sun. Not only is it by far the largest object in our solar system, but it's also the center of our solar system. Now, the sun is huge. Like, really, 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 really big. It's really, really big. I really can't stress that enough, how big it is. It's ginormous. It's massive. It's immense. It's colossal. It's large. It's just really, really, really big. The sun accounts for 99.9% .9 of the mass in our solar system. That includes all the other planets, asteroids, comets, and satellites combined. It is 99.9% .9 or almost all of the mass, which is crazy. A lot of people are probably like, well, Earth's pretty big, right? Yeah. All right, dude. I'm sorry, but no. You could fit 1,300,000 Earths into the sun. The funny thing about this is that our sun is actually just kind of a medium-sized star. Compared to the other stars that you see in the night sky, the sun's kind of right in the middle. Now, there are a lot of stars that are smaller than the sun, but there are a lot of stars that are way bigger than the sun. Some solar systems also have two suns, which can probably get pretty awkward at family reunions. I'm your sun. Well, I'm your sun. <laughs> sorry, bad joke. I'm gonna do more though. I'm gonna do more bad jokes. So, just deal with it. Now, everything in our solar system is held together by the sun's gravity. The sun has immense gravity, and all the planets and everything else is just going, hold me. The sun is holding everything in place. Everything orbits the sun. It follows a pattern around the sun. Now, depending on how far objects are from the sun, it takes a longer time for it to orbit. But we're gonna get into that when we talk about the planets and all the other jazz. So that's the sun. By far the most important thing in our entire solar system. Without the sun, we would have no heat, light, energy, and there could be no life. So it's... It's a pretty big deal. Okay, so now that we've talked about what's at the center of our universe, the sun, which is holding everything in place, we can now talk about the planets. Now, there are eight... Philip is full of eight planets in our solar system. If we were to list them off in order from the sun, we would have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Now you can group the planets up into two types. The four planets closest to the Earth, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are all what we call terrestrial or rocky planets. This means that their surface is made mostly of rocks and solid materials. After the terrestrial planets, the four guys on the outside are what we call gas giants. And not like <laughs> that gas. Now this is a really simple name for these four planets out there. They are made mostly of gas and guess what? They're huge. So we call them gas giants. That's Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Those are the gas giants. So we have the four inner terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Then we have the four gas giants. The ones that are further out in the solar system are massive and are made mostly of gases. More than one. So now let's start with some fun facts about each planet. We'll start with our boy Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. It is also the smallest planet. Oh, little guy. What is a little guy? Now because Mercury is so close to the sun, it doesn't take long for it to complete one orbit around the sun. On Earth, an orbit takes 365 days, also called a year. It only takes Mercury 88 days to go around the sun. So a year on Mercury is actually only 88 days long. So if you all lived on Mercury, you'd be roughly four times as old as you are now. So in less than one Earth year, or 352 days, Mercury has already orbited the sun four times. Or in other words, completed four years on that planet. Mercury's probably sitting there like, let's go, let's go. So that's Mercury. It's the closest to the sun and is also the smallest planet. Let's move on to Venus and not the tennis star. <laughs> I told you I was gonna have more bad jokes. I wasn't lying. Now Venus's size is very similar to that of Earth's. Venus is also the second brightest nighttime object in the sky. So you should be able to see it if you know where to look. Where's Venus? Venus's atmosphere is made up of mostly carbon dioxide and a little bit of nitrogen. So any heat that gets to the planet gets trapped in a greenhouse gas effect, causing temperatures on the planet to be whoo! Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system. Temperatures on the surface of Venus can reach over 860 degrees. That's hot. Temperatures get so hot on Venus that it can actually just melt lead. Literally melt your face off. Now let's get to everybody's favorite planet, 
Earth! Greetings, I am from Earth. Although my wife doesn't think so all the time. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not married. Gotcha again. That's number three. Now Earth is a miraculous planet with a bunch of different life forms and a great atmosphere which helps support life. Unlike Mercury and Venus, Earth has a moon. We have one moon. We love you, moon. Now, astronomers like to call moons by a different name. They call them satellites. To help explain what a satellite is, I thought I'd bring in a guest scientist. His name is Dr. Argyle Bruce, and he's going to help explain what a satellite is to you guys. Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Argyle Bruce. Mr. Gaff invited me to talk about my passion project, putting ferrets on the moon. What? No. Satellites? Are you joking? Alright, alright, I'll talk about the satellites. Then I'm gonna talk about me ferrets on the moon. Now when you think about satellites, don't be thinking about those communication things up in the sky. Oh, I just sent the picture to me dad of a dog playing the flute. Not funny! While those objects do orbit the Earth, a natural satellite is an object that orbits a celestial body or a body in the sky. Now this could be a planet or another small dwarf planet, or in some rare cases, even an asteroid. So that's a satellite then. It's a smaller object that orbits something bigger. Different planets have different amounts of satellites. We have Un, the moon. It's not made of cheese! It's not made of cheese though. I ate a moon rock one time and I was sick for days. All right, now that I'm done talking about satellites, I'm gonna move on to ferrets on the moon. So what we have to do is we take all the ferrets, we put them- Sorry, I didn't mean that. That was, that might have been too much. I'm sorry. He's a good guy, trust me, he's a good guy. So back to Earth. Now, why does life exist on Earth and not really anywhere else in our solar system? Well, Earth exists in what astronomers call a Goldilocks zone. This name actually does come from the famous story about Goldilocks, who should have been arrested for breaking and entering to the bear's house and stealing their stuff. Now, if you don't know that story, Goldilocks went into the bear's house, ate some porridge. One was a little too hot, one was a little too cold, and one was just right. Now, Earth exists a distance from the sun that is just right for supporting life. Woo! Lucky us. If we were further out, it would be a little bit too cold. If we were further in, it would be too hot. So we're right in that Goldilocks or just right zone where we can sustain life. Yay! So that's the Earth. We love it. Let's get on to Mars. Mars kid. I love Mars. Mars bars. Get some Mars bars up in here. Mars is a fantastic candy company. You're doing a great job. Shout out to you. Keep it up. Call me. I got some ideas. Now Mars is called the Red Planet and it's actually a decent amount smaller than Earth. Mars is actually the second smallest planet in the solar system. People lately have been obsessed with going to Mars. Well, why is that? Number one, it's close. Relative in our solar system, Mars is pretty close by. It would still take us about seven months to get there, but that's really not that bad when you consider the other options, like Venus, who would melt your face off. Now, scientists believe that life used to exist on Mars for a few reasons. Number one, they have found evidence of water in the form of ice. Scientists have also noticed that there are canyons and riverbeds that might have been formed by running water years and years and years ago. The atmosphere on Mars is 100 times thinner than that of Earth, so if you were to go there, it would be pretty dangerous. But scientists do think that we'll be able to get people there soon. Okay, so those are the four rocky planets or terrestrial planets, the four planets closest to the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Now there is something located in between the four inner terrestrial planets and the four outer gas giants, and that is an asteroid belt. There are a bunch of asteroids, which are pieces of rock that were left over after the Big Bang. These are the unlucky guys who didn't attach themselves to a planet and are now just floating out. There is actually an asteroid named Ida, which has its own satellite or moon. An asteroid with a moon. Crazy talk, Mr. Gaff! But it's true. So now we're going to talk about the gas giants, and we're going to start with the biggest gas giant of them all, Jupiter! Hey, teach, look, gas giants. Stop! Now, Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, and I love Jupiter. So I'm gonna rattle off some facts about Jupiter really quick that might or might not blow your mind. If your mind is blown, please see the nurse at your earliest convenience. Jupiter's mass is two and a half times bigger than all the other planets combined. It's made up mostly of hydrogen and helium. Jupiter has 79 moons. It's over a hundred times bigger than Earth. And lastly, there is a big red spot on Jupiter, which is creatively called the Great Red Spot. But the Great Red Spot is, is a massive storm two and a half times the size of Earth. Think about a hurricane on steroids. 
or just that goes to the gym every day and takes its time, eats its supplements and its veggies and everything like that. You know, it just takes care of itself. Not only is this storm massive, but another crazy thing about it is it may have been raging for over 300 years. I'm falling, I don't know why. Scientists over 300 years ago have documented seeing the big red spot raging on Jupiter. It's a big storm. And it's really cool. So that's Jupiter, the biggest and gaseous gas giant of them all. Now we're gonna talk about Saturn. Now most people know Saturn for its, for its, for its, for its rings, right? Now the rings on Saturn aren't actually all one solid ring material. It's pieces of dust, rock, and ice that have been pulled there by Saturn's gravity. When you look at it from far away, it looks like the planet has rings, and Saturn has some really, really cool looking rings. Saturn is also the second biggest planet in the solar system, and has over 50 moons. Although it is the second biggest planet in the solar system, it is also the lightest, made up of mostly hydrogen and helium. I'm Saturn, I'm light as a feather. Now let's move on to the next planet, Uranus. Uranus is the coldest planet in the solar system. It's called the ice giant. Bay. Uranus has a core that's the size of the Earth, and it also has 27 moons. Now it takes Uranus 84 years to complete one orbit or revolution around the sun. That means season on Uranus can last up to 20 years. Uranus also has rings, but they're not as pronounced or defined as Saturn. And lastly, we get to Neptune, which looks like a big blue candy. Delicious. It takes Neptune 165 years to make one full orbit around the sun. Neptune has 14 moons and some of the craziest weather in the solar system. Winds on Neptune can reach speeds of up to 1200 miles per hour, which is actually faster than the speed of sound. What? So those are the four gas giants, the four planets that are located furthest out. We have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Last thing we're gonna look at are comets. Comets are pieces of frozen rock and ice that orbit the sun. You can think about comets like giant snowballs. As comets get close to the sun, they are warmed by the sun, and then they release gases. This can make it look like comets have a tail, which looks really cool. The most famous of these comets is Halley's Comet, which passes by the Earth every 75 years or so. It was last seen in 1986, so you do the math. That's it, guys. That's all I have for the solar system. I'm about to take off. <laughs> I wanted to leave you with one last terrible joke, and I believe that I have.